happy Saturday, everyone. Welcome to episode 13 of 20 Questions With. Today's special guest is going to be Stizza, Sturgeon, whatever you want to call him, from Leftover Crack, Choking Victim, and Star Fucking Hipsters. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Erin Micklow, and I host a show on YouTube where I interview bands, cover their live sets, and do festival recaps. So let's see if Stizza is in here yet. Yeah, Stizza is on punk time. Um, I pinned a comment to Stizza's PayPal and his Venmo if you guys want to give him tips because just like all musicians um, in this time, their tours have been canceled. They've lost a lot of income. Uh, for me, myself, if you want to support me, you can give me tips. I don't make any money from this show and quite a bit of effort does go into it. So if you want to support the show because you're enjoying it, um, I would very much appreciate that. Do a backflip. I can't, bitch, I can't do any backflips. Stizza, Sturgeon, where are you? He's not here yet. All right, enjoy the music. Let me text him and see where he's at. Hi! Hey, I'm it sorry. Works. Um, I had to, I got a cured last night and I had to pull half of the computer cables out of my arms. Oh my God. <laughs> it's nice yeah. to see you. Nice to see you too. How you doing? Um, yeah, I maybe should have went running around uh, Union Square, you know, <laughs> hours before this thing. You know, we've literally been in this apartment for um, like three months without leaving the hallway, and uh, it's the first time I went gallivanting around New York City. So I can imagine. How was the party last night? It was pretty rad. I think it lasted about 45 minutes. For the, <laughs> the new party, you know, schedule. Yeah, for everyone out there that doesn't know, um, Days and Days album just charted on Billboard, so they were having a little a little celebration for it. It's a big deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, that's there's not a better band that, like, like a humble, like nice people that it could have happened to, I feel like. So, so it's pretty exciting, you know? For sure. sure. And then you were saying too, um, you have a hidden track at the end of it that you have, you played a part in. Well, I mean, you know, I feel like that's, that's all of us. But it's, yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, it's, um, can I curse on this, on the internet? Yeah. Is that <laughs> community guidelines? Okay. You can swear, yeah. <laughs> the song is called Go F Yourself. But, you know, I'm making everybody else think of the word fuck. And I'm not saying it out loud. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> 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 um, okay, so let's jump into our questions. Um, out of all of your various aliases, what is your favorite for people to address you as? You have so many. Um, gee. You know, I guess that I, I like my friends to call me um, this one really obscure thing. So I'm not going to say it loud because then everybody will call me that and then I'll be really confused. But then the people call me Scott. Nah, that don't work. My mom calls me Scott. I don't really respond to that one. Um, Sturge or like, um, um, you know, Crack Daddy. Or, or Dr. Dr. Crack. <laughs> I mean, they're all so funny. I, I don't know. I like, for me, I just always like Stizza. It just kind of rolls off the tongue. Stizza. You know, that's, you're the first person to say that it rolls off the tongue. But I think a lot of people didn't used to know how to pronounce it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I inter One of my very first interviews I ever did when I started my channel, I felt like, so I was thinking about that today because I read that. Um, you came up with Stizza because you were uh, inspired by like RZA and and like the guy the guys from um, what is it? It's Wu Tang Clan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I interviewed you know, an artist that had RZA on one of their guest tracks, and I didn't know how to say it. I literally pronounced it RZA, and he was like, "Um, hey, Aaron, it's RZA." That's not the worst pronunciation. Saying RZA. I mean, there's, there's much worse pr uh, pronunciations that could happen there. Um, For sure. I felt like a yeah. fucking idiot, though. Um. Well, I don't think you're an idiot. But <laughs> fuck, fuck everybody else, though, right? <laughs> um, so you actually just got a new tattoo on your face. It's somewhat new. 
Can you talk about what inspired that? I mean, that's pretty gnarly. Like face tattoos seem to be the new thing now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, um, you know, I'm not the uh, spring chicken anymore. And I, I was like, oh, what can I do to like, like, you know, to to take the focus off of the fact that I'm getting really old. Like, what do the kids do? And like, they, uh, I threw out my skateboard and my like ski cap and I got a facial tattoo. <laughs> And then now what, what is it? It's like a tree or something, right? Um, you know, we'd have to ask our friend Spike that did it to see what uh what the official word is. I can't see it. Like, I mean, I can see it kind of in a mirror, but it's like, you know, it's not my concern so much. Yeah, for sure. So I saw the, the, the artist that did it, he was talking about, he's like, oh, he, he can't wait to do more tattoos on your face. Like, do you have any plans for more face tattoos? I don't, I don't usually make plans to get tattoos. I usually just get one when it's like really, 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 really convenient. Yeah. And, and then, uh, and then like half my tattoos are terrible. That's okay. Well, you hear that with like a lot of artists though. A lot of artists, they'll get um, tattoos because they're just like, ah, oh, I want to get more tattoos and I'll, I could get them for free because of my band. Like a lot of, a lot of tattoo artists want to tattoo musicians, you know, it's good for their books. Sure. And like, <laughs> like, what was that? I think it was JJ from Discharge that said that. He's like, oh yeah, man, I'm getting all these tattoos because I have an artist and he, you know, he likes to do them. <laughs> uh huh. And he does them for free because he wants to be on the YouTube video of them playing or something. Maybe. I don't know. I think it's just a thing. I mean, it's, it seems like a convenient way. And then, then, like you said, maybe you end up with some tattoos that are like, why did I get this? Who cares? I, I think the problem with tattoos and rushing to get them is that you don't, you only have so much room and you know what I mean? It's like, if you rush and get all your tattoos, then then what are you gonna do with your time? Yeah. If that, if that was your big like plan for the year or two, you gotta take up a new hobby. Yeah, you run out of space and then you end up having to black them out and then you're just like black. Oh, you mean? Well, I guess some people get them removed, but I don't know how successful that is. It's not. You know, I've had tattoos lasered. They don't really fully go away. It's not. It's it's not great. <laughs> Does it look paler than it was before? The yeah, skin? it just looks like yeah. shitty and like it looks it looks more shitty. Oh, oh, well, you know what? I might get a tattoo laser if it would just to get it a little shittier. Some of these are <laughs> they're like ninety percent shitty. If I get that for ten percent, then I'd be like, I'd have something to like you know achieve. I might make that one tattoo magazine about the really bad tattoos. <laughs> You can be like the, um, what is it? It's it's like the cheetah, the bad cheetah tattoo. Have you seen that one? Oh, um, well, my friend Larry has is the leopard guy. Oh, yeah. Are you talking about? Are you talking, should I tell him that you think it's bad? I'll tell him next time. <laughs> so wait, I, you know the guy that had the original bad leopard? I don't know if he's original, but he has a leopard tattoo. He lives in Austin. But he, he always looks like he has a sunburn. And under the the blue tattoo, and it seems uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't know. The sunburn with the tattoo is um an interesting look. Yeah. So um, I actually heard that you, the band Leftover Crack, you guys are working on a book, an oral history. Can you talk about that? Like, how far along are you, and like, how's it coming? Well, that's really Brad's project mainly. Um, I am, I am helping him. But he, he doesn't ask me for help much, which which causes a little bit of concern because I wonder if, you know, where he's at with it or if, like, he just doesn't really care to know if things are accurate. <laughs> no, I'm sure that there'll be fact-checking and plenty of stuff. I'm, I'm supposed to do the art for the cover, perhaps, too, I think. so. Yeah. Well, I think uh, when you release any book, especially, you know, I think you guys have like a publisher lined up already and they have to fact check stuff for legal Right, reasons. right, right. That's fact. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, um, Brad is really good. Uh, he's really good at talking and 
I don't know. You've met Brad. He's very engaging, whatever he's talking about. So I think that if he gets his voice on there, that it'll be a good read regardless of the content. But there's probably going to be some pretty fucking crazy content, I would guess. Yeah. Things I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I love Brad. I, I actually, I had a FaceTime with him uh, when this quarantine started. And he had mentioned the book and how he was like, you know, in this quarantine, finally getting around to, to working on it because it's it's been something that, you know, w when you're touring so aggressively or, or you're on tours, it's it's kind of like on the back burner. Yeah, it's interesting what um, what people are prioritizing these days as as they're um, as things are way different. I'm definitely getting a lot of different things done. Not at all what I'm supposed to be doing, which is like. Two new choking victim records have not do not have lyrics, and you know there's a talk of wanting to release it in a few weeks or like get it start start getting it printed in a few weeks, and it's like, but there's no lyrics. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think it's it's hard in these times because it's like you have all this free time, but then it's like, are you motivated? You know, like, I mean, there's definitely like ways of emotion. Of, of being motivated. Like I've personally gone through it myself and talking to a lot of other artists, it's the same. It's like, you know, cause there is that like depression that's underneath it all too, of like, this shit sucks. Yeah, you know, um, I, I, I usually have the depression regardless and um, it's definitely palpable and, um, and it's definitely keeping me from working on music as much as I'd like to. Seems like I can find thousands of, of uh, excuses for not working on music, so. I feel you, I do the same through my day to day. I'm like, I've got stuff to shoot today and I'll find an excuse of like, oh, I don't feel good today, I'm tired. It's, it's hard some days. It's hard when, when I oversleep so much and that's the thing sometimes like being uh, out to like between you and I and everybody else listening, I'm, I would be sleeping all day anyways, <laughs> but I feel better about it that there's no, like, I'm not missing a party or a show. I can just yeah. do it kind of a, a little less guilty, get a little more guilt-free, I suppose. Yeah, so I saw that, though, yeah, that you posted that you don't normally get up till around 5, 5 p.m. Is that because of the quarantine, or that's, like, all the time? Uh, You know, <laughs> I <laughs> think... <laughs> I think it's probably percentage wise, it's probably the majority of the time I probably don't wake up till after two or three. But yeah. um but I'm insomniac. I have a lot of trouble with the sleep. And, you know, it's one of the reasons that like I I think I'm crazy and that doesn't help me sleep, but it's a uh, perpetuating thing that that the not sleeping makes me crazier also and so Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I definitely can feel you on that. I mean, like, I, I do all kinds of things to try and, and to get sleepy. Like, the, a couple days ago, I just bought this um, projector machine that looks like the ocean because I'm really just missing leaving the house. Uh -huh. And it makes, like, lights on the ceiling that look like the ocean. Uh, how far are you from the ocean, actually? Um, kind of far. I'm in Hollywood. But, you know, I mean, it, we're not going anywhere. We're not leaving our houses. <laughs> Three hour, three hour, three hours on the bus when I was homeless in LA Aww. to get to Venice, at least. Yeah, I think from where I'm at with, with like no traffic, it's like at least 45 minutes to get to Venice by car. You're a little closer though. Yeah, a little bit. The problem with the LA buses is that you have to take it from wherever you are at that moment. No matter that you're 45 minutes from the beach, you have to take it back downtown to Cesar Chavez, and then you have to take another bus, and then you have to change buses, and so it takes three hours. Or I don't oh, know. I know. I, and sometimes they just don't show up. Like, well, you know, that's fair enough. I mean, if I was an LA bus, I would. I'd be looking for a new city too, maybe. <laughs> um, so speaking of public transportation, buses, cars, things. You used to ride freight trains when you were a teenager, but that's pretty dangerous. Can you talk about some of your scariest experiences when you used to do that? Uh, scariest? Well, all right. 
Well, honestly, I didn't ride very many trains when I was a teenager. I kind of started towards the end of being a teenager, and, and it was a lot more in my 20s I did that. And um, and scary, you know, a lot of crazy shit happens on the trains, but when your life day-to-day is kind of special and crazy and chaotic, it's it's hard to really pinpoint, like, one day being, like, extra extra rough. I, I remember one time um, me and Pez and Shane, the bass player from Choking Victim, we uh, we had played a show with Bouncing Souls in in Harrisburg or Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and we got some kids to give us a ride to, to Harrisburg, to the train yard, and then we, we rode from out there, but uh, there's this it's like, whatever, famous if you ride trains or know anything about trains, there's this horseshoe curve in Altoona and uh, they saw us on there and got the cops. And then then Shane had weed. I love talking about illegal shit like this on in public places. So, you know, if you want any confidential, like, I could read you my birth certificate. You know, all that stuff. <laughs> but I think, I mean, like, obviously back then, maybe weed was a bigger deal. And then today, weed is a lot more accepted. Yes. Though, I don't know what it is um, state to state, but when you get caught in the middle of nowhere by cops, they tend to be, like, a certain type of dick. They're not always, like, more violent or more... It's you know, the most frustrating thing because um, it's not something that I have any control over, unfortunately. It's stupid. Are we done being in quarantine and I can go back to doing my show? interviewing bands where I have control over the gear, because that would be awesome. Yeah, you're back. You're back. I'm so sorry that you broke your computer. I'm just kidding. Um, no, I mean, this is something, the last few live streams I've done this keeps happening, and it's, it's so frustrating, because when I do my interviews with, like, my proper gear, I have a lot more control, and when we're at the mercy of these fucking live streams, it makes me so frustrated. What's your proper gear? Um, you, I mean, you've seen it at Rebellion. I have like, you know, like actual legit cameras and audio gear with microphones and things. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, but this is what we've been reduced to in this quarantine, you know? I feel like it's a promotion for me. Um, sorry. I'm sorry that you, if you feel like you're slumming it, but you know what? It's C-Squat. It's gross I don't, here. No, it's not slumming it because I'm of joking, you. But... It's, uh, I know. It's it's the quarantine times that we're in that we connect this way, but it's um, it is kind of beautiful too that we have this because imagine in the days when there was no internet, we've been doing this interview over Morse code, and <laughs> <laughs> beep 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 beep, <laughs> very riveting stuff, you know. No, I guess I guess it would be like a zine where it would be like I'd call you on an actual phone and then like take notes and then type it out and then print it in a zine and then try to publish it places. I guess that's what it would be. That sounds good. That, that sounds like something I could put in front of the toilet and read for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really do that with the internet. I know. I mean, this is, well, people, people can sit on the toilet and watch this on their phones, you know. You know, I, I always drop my phone in the toilet just as like, ah. Par for the course every time. Why is it backwards? Oh, what happened? Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. And as it so, falls. Um, let's jump, um, let's jump back in where we left off. Um, I wanted to ask, what's your yeah. opinion of like kind of crust punks today versus crust punks when you were coming up? Wait, um, my my opinions of the dip, how crust punks are different. Yeah, I mean, just how, how you've seen things evolve, um, you know, like now we're in this millennial culture and like I definitely see that with crust punks that shows now how it's like the younger crust punks, they, they have a lot of that millennial type stuff about them. Like, like what's in a good example, so I know what we're talking about. I don't like know, it's just aughts? how you've seen things like change. Spange, what? <laughs> What'd you say? Okay. Um, I I do. There's a difference. Well, I mean, first off, it seems like there are more crusties than ever, right? 
I mean, in the 80s, which I wasn't really a crusty in the 80s, but I, I, I was in New York still. Um, there was hardly any. I mean, there's a few. And they're probably in bands mostly or people that were like really big fans of like Nausea. Nausea is a good example of like proto crust pumps, right? Punk, pump, punk, punks, pumps. So when I started hanging out at Sea Squat, um, what I noticed is that, and what I noticed declining was that um, throughout the 90s really was a, uh, crust punks used to be political anarchist peace punks, as they were called on some level, you know, not all of them were peace punks, some of them were very violent, but there was like kind of in general understanding that everybody kind of shared a certain level of anarchist politics, you know? Yeah. And then, and then um, at some point in the nineties, there became a shift of like a lot of just like, I don't want to, like, single out a certain, like, state or, you know, and I don't know anybody's name, so that's not going to be a problem. <laughs> but, I I mean, I remember that having friends that I met um, when I was really young that were from, like, Louisiana or Florida. And they'd always joke about, you know, they'd get, like, a pickup truck and they'd joke about getting a gun rack. And they'd talk like a redneck and this and that. And then you don't see them for 15 years. And they're no longer joking. That is their accent and... Their car's a gun rack, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, you are what you pretend to be on some level, so beware, right? For sure, for sure. Um, so, with Choking Victim, did you, you mentioned earlier that you're coming out with some new albums for Choking Victim? Choking Victim has, has a live record that I need to fix one song on, and then, uh, and then we have a, a seven inch that we're working on that has two new songs. One of them is a new song that's on the, uh, I didn't say there was one, but there's a new song on the live record. And so there'll be two new songs on a seven inch. And I, I believe our two covers of, of uh, that we've been playing forever of 80 songs, uh, Sweet Dreams and Money Changes Everything. That's mostly recorded, not the lyrics. So Yeah. Well, so for you with that, what are your feelings about like the band becoming as iconic as it is, having only really put out like one album and one EP like 20 years ago? Well, uh, Leftover Crack or Choking Victim? Choking Victim. Are we talking Choking Um, I mean, yeah, I guess that's kind of accurate. I mean, we had like a demo with nine songs and then four of those songs were on a seven inch and then four other songs were on a second seven inch. And we, we have, you know, I mean, it, it's scattered around, but it's maybe two records worth of stuff. But yeah. it's actually kind of, it's kind of cool to be, uh, to have a, a band, well, to have a record, like have so few songs, but the songs that we have are, people like them and know them and uh it's a luxury to be be able to have like a classic record or a, a, you know something like that is what they call it. it's like uh like we don't need to write a new record for people to come out to see us they would prefer us not to they would rather just hear the whole other record probably you know and yeah, I, I didn't know, realize that that album was as old as it was because it, it is really timeless <laughs> I wanted to be self-deprecating with the timeless thing, but uh, I mean, I I think that I, I I make attempts to be timeless with the songwriting a lot. Um, it's not that hard, but I you know when you mention like a brand name of something or like or there's this, there's certain ways of dating your song that that uh, are usually kind of boring, and like if you can make it it work, it's actually really interesting, but. Yeah. I, I can't be an example either, you know, but, uh, but so I, I, I sing about death a lot because, because there's always going to be. Yeah. That's the thing. For sure. So you can't really like, uh, you know, like people are like, you know, but it's always going to be relevant as long as people listen to music, I suppose. Or not. For I sure. Yeah. I feel like I talk like a, an absolute sometimes and I have no idea what's going on ever. 
Well, hopefully you'll get around to the lyrics soon of fixing those songs so those new releases can come out. <laughs> Well, well, mixing is not the problem. It's it's. Uh, I literally need to write, write the lyrics, write the lyrics, and also like you know, I, I pretty much have vocal melodies for it, but I, I could do better. I'm always afraid of ruining a good song with a with a shitty vocal melody. So, I think that's a valid fear. I mean, I think that's a valid fear as a musician. But also, we've you know, I've been doing this a while, and I feel also like. There's no rush because, like, the, you know, it's other people haven't gotten to put out records and, and we've done plenty and it's like, we don't have to prove ourselves and we don't need to put out something that's subpar or like, like you know, less than I would like to listen to. So, that being said, I'd love to finish it soon. Do you have any well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it'll be done soon. Um, so... Years ago, you were arrested for throwing donuts at police officers during a demonstration in New York. This is a story that's talked about a lot with you, and I, I think it's really fucking funny. Um, can you share that story of what, what kind of happened with that? This was like, what, 2008? Yeah, okay, so um, we've <laughs> traditionally played free shows as often as we can. You know, we're, we're we live one block from Tompkins Square Park, and uh, we, uh, you know, I grew up watching shows in the park for free. Like all the best punk shows usually happen at some point in the park, even if nobody was there. Just great bands played over the years, and uh, and so I, I somewhere along the lines, I got noticed by the police for my lyrical content about the police. And It's muted again. I am gonna lose my shit today. I'm gonna lose my fucking shit today. It's muted again. Everybody's saying they can't hear. It's muted. I'm gonna kill somebody today. <laughs> oh my God. Stop him, no sound. Everyone is saying the sound is out. I'm gonna disconnect again. All right, let's see if we can re-add him. Oh my God, you guys, you guys, I'm gonna lose my shit today. I swear to God, I swear to fucking God. <laughs> okay. Um, here we go, let's try. <laughs> hey. Okay, Again? it's working, I think. Yeah. I have no idea what that is. Yeah, this has been a thing that's been happening. Whenever it's been happening lately with the live streams. Like I had a, a couple, it happened the other day and it happened like last week. And I think it's just a blip with Instagram because so many fucking so, people are me. on. Should we switch to a different app? <laughs> Should we do? I don't know how to do any of the other ones. I don't, I don't know how to, this is the only one I'm like, Proficient in patching people in from far away locations. Right. Oh God, it's frozen again. Hold on. <sighs> Who knows how to fix this? <laughs> Oh, God. Um, everyone out there watching, um, definitely, can, no, this keeps happening when I patch people in. It's, um, I don't know, maybe try to, um, Sturge, maybe try to turn your Wi-Fi off. I don't know how your connection is there. 
But um, you could try that. Sometimes that helps. Go right next to a router if you're on the web. Yes. Think it had to do. <laughs> no! Come on. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Skype. Um, everyone is saying turn your Wi-Fi off. Sturge, turn your Wi-Fi off is what people are saying. Let's see if that helps. Call me on the landline. <laughs> uh, there's a storm coming through the Lower East Side. We're all buffering right now. Oh, really? <sighs> I'm hating this quarantine today, guys. I'm just, I'm hating it so much. I miss, I miss seeing people in person. Oh. For Zoom. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to use Zoom. I guess I'll have to learn. Accept me again. Yes. Um, here we go. Yeah. Sturge, um, your personal account doesn't have the right settings to add you to the live stream. It has to be from the leftover crack account, unfortunately. Um, it must just be like the settings on your private account, your personal account. Well, anyways, um, while we get this sorted, everyone, if you're enjoying this, um, I've pinned um, Sturge's PayPal and Venmo, please uh, give him tips because obviously like all musicians out there, um, he has lost all of his tours in this time. Um, support your favorite musicians. He also has a bunch of art for sale on his Instagram. So go support. And let's try this again. God damn it. I need to start drinking heavily after this. What is, what is this life that we're living? It's not. Hi, Aaron. Are we back? Hi, beautiful. <laughs> hey, I, I, could, I don't need the computer. I guess I can. OK. It's working. Okay. And I unplugged, I unplugged the, the cord that was charging the phone, because that seems like it goes where you talk, too. I don't know. I, you know, I haven't figured it out, but I'm getting irritated. And I think, like, a lot of people just keep saying that with, with Instagram, it's just because so many people are online, you know? Tell everybody to stop watching. <laughs> Everybody else stop doing your live streams because this one is more important. <laughs> um, I wouldn't go that far, but we are um, weirder looking than the other live streams. <laughs> For sure. Um, I can't deny you on that. Um, so we're at the point of halfway through our 20 questions. I wanted to ask, will you play us some songs? Yeah. Um, do you have any requests? Because like, I I am um, I know a bunch of songs, but I don't know. I never know what to start or what to play. Um, I you know I really like that song "Infested" from Choking Victim. That one always makes me laugh. <laughs> okay. You know what? I like I, that, a Scott Punk song, so I'll, I'll play I'll play it until I feel like I'll play like half of it, and if it sounds good, I'll keep going. But I feel like. It's four chords and ska, so um, for some reason Jesse from uh, Days and Days and, and Whitney can, can pull off ska on acoustic guitars or whatever, but I can't seem to. And I guess I'm cool with playing acoustic guitar. I need the back. Uh, the black one? Yeah. Do you need a tuner? You don't like my tuner. I think I'll be okay. Okay. I love your tuner. No, you don't. Are you, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I just hope it doesn't cut out again. Like, I... I think it'll be okay. It's Whenever it cuts out, just do, um, go like this. And I'll know that, <laughs> that I'm cut out and see if I can fix it, you know? Oh, God. It's, it's the most or, or frustrating you thing. Or you could do this. <laughs> I don't know what this also. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. And <laughs> I have one, uh, am I going to do one right now, or should I do two? I can make it into uh, a medley. Let's do two. Let's do two. Okay. How about we'll do that? 
infested choke victim and then I'll do a leftover crack song? Yes. Okay. And we'll try and keep them all below 30 seconds or something. I should probably tune, but you know. And everyone out there too, like I said before, in the pinned comment, um, you can see Stizza's PayPal and Venmo if you want to send him money for the entertainment because he lost all of his tours like all other musicians in this time. You know, they're postponed, but it just, I, I don't know if that's a forever postponement, you know? It kind of feels I like mean, it lately. Like, we really hope, I mean, it, it seems like doubtful that July might be happening, but we're really hopeful that the Bouncing Souls shows will go on in August. I think we already advertised those as being postponed and rescheduled. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, they just, they just canceled Rebellion for this year, and that was supposed to be in August. They had to completely cancel it for 2020. Maybe there'll just never be shows again. So we'll have to figure out a different way to, you know, to, to, to look cool smoking cigarettes. <laughs> I don't know. People love it when I tune my guitar. So I try to pro prolong the magic. <laughs> We'll, we'll see how this actually I did write this song on an acoustic guitar and it was uh um I feel like I was telling a story and then I didn't finish it because the sound cut out. It wasn't very good, was it? Was it telling Oh god uh, it's buffering. Oh no I see you buffering. Everybody's hmm. about to see me cry. Like I'm literally gonna start crying. This is making me so frustrated. <laughs> is, is am I on the phone? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're you're there now. <laughs> you're cutting out a little bit too yourself there. I don't know if it's me. I'm gonna look and see what kind of internet. Let me see what I can do here. I just won't have it where it was, maybe. This is fun. I mean, if people aren't niche enough for this stuff, then like, they're not gonna want to even hear any of my songs, anyways. I figured. <laughs> That's know? a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there's that. Um. All right. Uh, what was it? Infested, and what, what else did I say? I didn't say anything else. You said I got Infested you. and a Leftover Crack song. You didn't say which one. All right. Seconders is like people won't get sick of it. All right, this one's called One Dead Cop. Mm -hmm. 
All New York City is clapping right now for some reason. I don't know. I knew they didn't like cops, but it's like, this is new to me. Good response. Um, songs? That's good. Maybe yeah. you, if you want to take like requests for a medley, I could try and do like eight in like two minutes later or something. Okay. We can do that at the end. At the end, we'll do, um, we'll do a couple more songs. And um, if you guys want to uh, request you songs. Hear, you, you don't hear the clanging. You don't hear the clanging and whistling. They, they, it sounds kind of like they're in, in jail cells, like bringing their cups across the bars. No, That's I didn't hear that. Them. Yeah, you know, you wouldn't be able to because it's, uh, I'm, in, I'm indoors. I'm going to sit and see if I, uh, oh, this is good, right? No, I can't really see you anymore. I think maybe I could do this. <laughs> Whatever it is that's <laughs> on nope, the phone, because it's working. It's like working right okay, there. It went, it went higher. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try and put you in something that won't shut down. All right, <laughs> I feel like you got some, like, tough questions for me, and uh, and I'm I'm ready for them, you know? Okay, we're lubricated I, enough I, I, to tackle I, I, the hard stuff. What's that? <laughs> I said, okay, we're lubricated enough to tackle the hard stuff now. Okay, I'm I'm getting a All little, right, little break up on your end, but it's probably my phone. Maybe I'll. Let me pull this oh up. no, I'm we have the buffer again. This table is closer to. Nobody knows we don't have it. Is that good? Can you hear me? It's not check, a great check, connection. Check. Um, wherever, okay. wherever the phone was before, where was the phone before? Because then it was good. What if I just do this? It'll be good and then bad and good and then bad. <laughs> um, all right. Woo! All right. Oh, Jesus. I got a ruler. I'm putting that in the back. And I'm putting this. I'm going to put it. Let's try this now. Our new spot. But this is the old spot. All right. This looks good to me. Maybe. Feeling exciting. Changing it up. Can you hear me now? The reception is. Okay, wait. You're no, kind of there. 
Oh, you're frozen. No? No, it's not. Oh, damn it. All right. Oh, wait. No, I can't. No, wait. Don't move. No. Don't move. It was good. It was good. Okay. Right. Woo. I'm taking this jacket off. It's, it's I have to have a drink the size of my head after this because this reception is stressing me out. I'm sorry. Oh. It's not your fault. Like, it's not your fault at all. It's it's just, um, you know. Well, maybe if I had bought internet at some point and not, you know, like, been pirating it, we might have, you know, have a better chance to plug this in. Yeah, I mean, maybe, but you know, you do what you got to do. So, okay, let's jump back into our yeah. questions. I want to address... Um, I want to address some of this, the stuff that you've kind of been going through in the last year that a lot of people are saying about you on the internet, because I don't, I don't agree with it. Um, a lot of this controversy, there was this rant that you posted. When you say a lot of what do you mean, what do you mean by a lot of people? Well, like how just, many people you know, the people of the internet are, the people of the internet are mean. I, I know it well. <laughs> Um, and like, there was like a Facebook post like two people. they made. Sometimes it's like only two people posting a hundred times and then it seems like a lot of people, but it's not. You know? Okay. Well, I want to give you a chance to kind of clear that up, like what, what that was really about. Um, the day that, you know, you and Whitney announced your engagement, there was like some Facebook post that people got really upset about and I wanted to give you a chance to kind of clear that up. Okay. Well, so... First off, I'm not very good at internet. I don't use Facebook a lot, but I um, I just uh, I I chose my words really unfortunately, and um, I've been I think I just watched. I hate dropping brand names or whatever, but I, I just had watched Rick and Morty, and they had an episode where they um they kept going on a hunt, and they're celebrating with a hunt, and I don't know, I and I just, you know, don't drink and text, don't you know. I mean, I was really happy at the moment, but uh, also I just, uh, you know, I have to just treat people more kindly, I just think. Even if I don't like them, I could be nice to them, right? Yeah. Don't don't drink in Facebook is the lesson here. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. That makes sense. Well, I mean, but I think I think that's something that everyone out there can kind of relate to, that it's like, you know, you got drunk, you had emotions, you posted some stuff online, and you woke up and you're like, fuck, what did I post right now? Shit, let me delete that. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunately, it really had a lot of mileage for, for biting me in the ass. Just, you know, I, I, I don't normally, I, I've definitely posted a few stinkers over the years, you know? But, uh, <laughs> but that one got a lot of mileage for being up for such a short amount of time. Um, you know, um, I, 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 I'm not really that violent a person. I, I don't pride myself on being violent, especially I'm not violent with people that I care about or like, you know, or, or, or date or anything like that. And, um, and it's, uh, you know, it does, if reading the post, it doesn't seem like that's the case, but it's, you know, I definitely wouldn't have written such strong language if it was to people that I didn't really know. But I knew the the people pretty well. You know, I, I tagged like like eight people or ten people, mostly guys. And uh, and I shouldn't have done that at all. You know, I shouldn't have aired my grievances or or you know. But you know, I, I there's. You learn, I don't know, I don't even like Facebook is a funny thing, so. Yeah, I think it's just, you know, I mean, I've, I've certainly been guilty of it myself, um, you know, in years past where I've aired my grievances online and, and then, you know, I was like, fuck, I shouldn't have done that and deleted it. And we live in such an age where people can screenshot it and spread it around and twist, twist the stories and twist the words. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it sounded like it was maybe just like a lot of personal stuff between all the parties involved, and it, it became a, a public thing. Yeah, yeah, that was my fault. And um, and you know, it's funny because it wasn't even that personal, and it wasn't even. It was just like the main thing was just like, unfortunately aborted, and unfortunately um, used against me as. as 
I think excessively, but you know, people use the internet. They do what they do with it. A lot of people don't have anything else in their life except the internet. So when they get a juicy sentence or two, it's uh, it's something they like to exploit. And like, you know, they don't have songs to write or paintings to paint. They have to, you know, be creative with, with you know, ostracizing people or, or you know, I don't know. I, I don't really know the psyche of everybody. I know that mine is is not one hundred percent. Uh, what's the word? Sane. <laughs> but uh, the, you know. I mean, I definitely have have compassion for you because it's it's. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair for people out there to say, "Oh, cancel, cancel leftover crack, rip the patches off." Like I. You know, I've met you a few times and you've never been anything but nice to me. And I think the people that really know you know that you're a gentle person and you wouldn't actually be violent, you know? I mean, I think a lot of people that know you know and, and that know your songs that, yes, substances come into play sometimes. It's not a, a secret. Well, the funny thing is that the people that I mentioned in that post all, all knew me well enough to know that that it was there's nothing to be afraid of in that you know what i'm saying they're all people that that knew me on a level that that uh that there was no threat involved in in what i wrote but you know maybe people changed the maybe i haven't seen some of them in a while and and one of them in particular changed their mind and maybe they did feel threatened and it's valid you know what i'm saying so yeah that's how they felt, but maybe instead of trying to crucify you on the internet, maybe, I mean, if, if somebody really felt threatened in a real way, it's the right thing to do is to not, not take the post and post more about it. If you really genuinely feel threatened, you go and you get a restraining order. You go, you take legal action maybe if you felt genuinely threatened in a way like that. I feel like a, a, a lot of people that I know would feel even less comfortable dealing with the police on, on a, uh, you know, being on the radar of the police. You know, nine times out of ten, if you call the cops, they're gonna arrest you probably, not you. Yeah. But, and so it's pretty um, consistent that that's the case. Yeah, yeah. I just, it's it's a weird situation. I mean, it's a weird situation for those things to be hashed out online publicly like that because it, it just doesn't seem like you're ever going to come to some kind of proactive resolution by doing that. You know, it, it, it's kind of like I fell into a trap that of my own making, you know, and and I, I usually don't do that. So I think that it was very special for some people that I fell into that trap that they're like, so that's why I got like taken advantage of a little more than, than usual. Maybe if I like wear shit like that every day, it would be inconsequential. But you know, it's not really my the kind of person I am. You know. So. Yeah. Well, hopefully by us touching on that, it can put it to rest, and people can. I'm sure it did I'm sure that it's officially over now. I hope so because I um I don't like it. I don't like that people are saying um, bad things about you uh, and. You know, if they were really true, I would have liked to see more proof, you know? I mean, there's, there is a comfort in, in stuff like this when what's being brought up is baseless, kind of like there, there aren't any events or facts tied into um, what people were talking about a lot in concerns to that email and, or that, uh, that post. So... It, it, you know, maybe I should be more concerned, but it's hard to be concerned about uh, about something that, that, you know, oh, I should be concerned about something I wrote, but it's not something I would ever do, and it's not something that that I have done, you know. So, so you know, I I I I don't want to belittle people's feelings, but it's like, uh, but I I I can't be overly conscious of this for for the rest of my life you know this one thing I wrote it's like it was written you know there were words and and they were not in a great order <laughs> and you know
Yeah. Okay, well, so let's address the next main controversial thing that people like to say about you, because um, I want to give you a chance to clear that up as well. Um, it's it's either, be sorry, it's either because when you say um, people like to say, it's, I feel like it's true. It's, I think these are things that people like to say. People, you know like, what, a lot of people like to feed into negativity. They, they want to see bad things about people. They want to bring people down. Yeah. Well, my friend in, um, a, a friend of mine once told me when uh, that had gone through similar things, he's in a band also that, uh, that the best story that someone that met you can have is that, uh, that you hit it off and that you're really good friends and you know, that, and that you're like best friends and that, and the second best story is not the, the main story, which the usual story is that, uh, Oh, yeah, I talked to them once. I don't really know them. That's not a great story. That's a far distant third or fourth. So the second best story is, oh, that person's a fucking asshole. They're terrible. I hate them. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I've had that. I can a thousand percent sympathize with you because I've had that where I've met people out and I literally shook their hand, complimented them, you know, introduced myself, asked their names took pictures with them, and then they run on the internet and say, oh, she was such a fucking cunt. Yeah, fuck. people are so fucking disappointing. You know what I'm saying? I just, uh, it's just... People and like to, they like to people spread are negativity. Nice to you to your face. People are nice to you to your face, and then they'd say shitty stuff. It's like, I, I literally, like, try never to speak about somebody behind their backs and say anything that I wouldn't say in front of them or to their faces. Yeah. Now, that would have been, like, complicated if I said that post in front of people, but it, it wouldn't have been taken as a threat, I don't think, because it's just, I'm a silly person. I think that a lot of my friends know that, but yeah. people don't want to believe it. For sure. I'm not curious as, uh, as somebody thinks. Somebody thinks. I don't know. Yeah. Who. So, the next the next one that we'll address of, of putting hopefully this to bed um, is the rumor that star fucking hipsters broke up because you allegedly punched Nico in the face for being late to practice. Can you clear that up? Well, there's a lot of things that aren't true in that, but mainly I never punched Nico. We were on tour and there's the last show she played with us. She quit. Um, after that show, but we there was never actually a physical altercation. Um, I feel like we had been at odds with each other for reasons that, like, Nico doesn't need to have aired in public, you know? Like, I mean, even if I, if I don't get along with someone, I, I definitely don't try to talk about their dirty laundry or things that might embarrass them because it's, I don't know, I don't want people doing that to me, and, and it's just... Like, you know, I don't, I don't really talk to her. I haven't seen her in years. I don't talk to her anymore. It's like, uh, um, but you know, I was friends with her for a long time and, and, you know, that's still part of how I think about her, you know, as a friend. So, but, but, uh, that's the thing is that what happened there, this was in, in, in Colorado, we played a show at this anarchist bookstore and, um, and I don't know if she told people, but um, she made it seem like I had punched her, like, and and nobody actually saw anything, so nobody saw that it didn't happen except like two people. But uh, um, she kind of left the band with that as I don't know why she chose that moment to leave the band, but she did. You know, I. I See, me talking more about it would just bring up, like, things that she said to me secretly that aren't nice, and it's like, I don't know. I, I don't really feel like making people look bad. Yeah, I mean, it's like you want to tell your side of it, but um, you don't want to also throw somebody under the bus because even though you're not friends anymore, you respect the time that you were friends. Yeah, and I feel like on some level, like, nobody really deserves to be thrown under the bus. You know, if, if you have personal problems with somebody and, like, that you, you can hopefully resolve them between yourselves or, or at least, like, 
keep your friction, you know, to like try not to make it everybody else's problem or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, it, I, I, it, it's weird to not want to speak ill of a person that really kind of spent a little bit of time trying to dismantle my life and like destroying my livelihood and my life and like my reputation just, you know, through this thing that didn't actually even happen. And I don't know, I, I, I can't really imagine doing it, just doing something like that to somebody, but people have their own miserable times to deal with. I get miserable too. I try not to like affect other people with it, but you know, it does affect other people. If I wasn't so miserable, I probably wouldn't have written such a negative Facebook post and people wouldn't be, uh, all, you know, jumping down my throat about it, so. Yeah, but I think, you know, I don't think that's, that's weird that you don't want to throw her under the bus back. I think that says a lot about you as a person and hopefully for everyone watching that, that will clear that up, that it's like, you're not malicious, you're not aggressive, and you know, it. you just want to live a good life and you've got your own sh fucking shit to deal with. I mean, I I mean, that's the thing is, is, and this is the, as malicious as I get usually is, um, is living well and, and just being successful and doing your own thing. I feel like that's, reve that's the best revenge I can get is just, you know, go, keep going on. Don't let people that want to stop you in your track, stop you, like just, you know, persevere. And honestly, if I didn't have so much adversity in my career and my life that I, I probably wouldn't be playing music. You know, there's something to be said if if um, if nobody's a, ha, sees something wrong in what you're doing or whatever you're you're doing something wrong or <laughs> I'm saying it wrong. You know what I'm saying? If they say if uh, if it's popular or nobody has, takes issue with with your performance or your lyrics or or anything, then um, you're probably doing something wrong. At yeah, you're not talking. affecting people in a real way. Yeah. So that's, I have more questions, but that's the end of the, the heated ones. I'm glad that um, you address those because <laughs> um, I hope that'll put a lot of that to rest because I'm tired of seeing the people of the internet say these things. You know, it probably won't put things to rest, but it's probably the first time I talked about it like publicly. So there's something to be said about that. Maybe it'll, um. It'll move in some direction, hopefully not worse. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for sharing that with, with me and everyone watching. I, I really appreciate you opening up and being vulnerable about that. Well, thanks for not ambushing me with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so can you talk about, you know, how when, when you started as a musician, how you cultivated your unique and recognizable style as a vocalist? I mean, so many people out there have been influenced and inspired by you and, and copped your style. I think I missed the question part. <laughs> you missed the question part. Like how, how did you come up when you were cultivating your style as a vocal? Oh, how did you come up with it? I was just talking, I was talking to Whitney about this yesterday about how uh, I think like Crimp Shrine came on, on the, my iPod and, uh, or my MP3 player is we're not sponsored by Apple. Um, but, uh, I, it's my influences are pretty easy to find and I probably talked about them a bunch in different interviews where I talked about my favorite bands and influences on on who influenced me the most but uh uh you know there was a, a time and place when in, in in the Bay Area when Crimp Shrine, Operation Ivy and Neurosis shared a practice space and and that's so Crimp Shrine have a record called Duct Tape Soup. And that's about that practice room because everything was duct taped together apparently. But there's something to be said that like, those are three of my favorite bands. And and by the way, I'm very influenced by Bay Area punk. Just throughout the years and and new and new stuff too. I don't know what, what it is. It's just my favorite bands come out of there. So Yeah. But you know, I, I figured after hearing like Crimp Shrine and like Jawbreaker and and even a little Op Ivy, I, and and then hearing like Green Day early on and not not being impressed by them, I, I thought to myself, why sing? If you're if you're in a 
doing a punk band, why sing without being like having gruff vocals or like a little crust in the vocal, you know? Yeah. Because that voice was better. I always thought it was better, you know? And that being said, I also loved it, love bands that, that have have more than one vocalist, especially when there's there's a male and a female or like two different genders or gender identities, you know, or just different voices. It's it's like kind of gets me pumped up, especially in, in punk, you know. Yeah. Nurses, nurses have three vocalists, so. For sure. I mean, you can definitely hear that in a, in a lot of the music you've made. Um, I even find myself sometimes I'm like, I don't know who's singing right now. I can't identify it. There's a lot of different, there's a lot happening here in your song. You mean like, like a new band that you don't know or? No, like in your, in your music. Oh, yeah. Well, also there's this thing where um, I think it's a hip hop influence where I like to kind of, when I make a record or I, you know, I'm involved in making a record, I like to kind of get as many people involved as possible, like my friends. I don't really like writing thank you lists, so I'd rather just grab my friends that I that I want to thank and just have them sing backup vocals, you know? And then getting people in bands that I look up to or, or friends of mine that are amazing. Um, I like to have them on the records and like to be able to put their band name in the record to get people to know them. And, and that doesn't happen a lot in, in punk or rock, you know? It's, it's a very hip hop thing. Yeah, it, it is. It's like, it's all about like your posse and you have your, your crew and your people. And also I think it, it's more special when you make a record and you have a dozen people on it that aren't in the band because it, it's, it's theirs too, you know? Yeah. It's something for them to also be proud of and it, it, it uh, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me to make it so precious that you can't involve your friends or what, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. For sure. I'm also mentally ill, so it might just be all the different voices in my head. Oh, you're, you are that meme. There's a meme going around that I saw last night and it's all like, oh, I'm fine in quarantine. My demons in my head keep me company. We're good. Oh, I haven't seen that one, but I hope the picture's good. Um, so what do you, what else do you have in the works for Leftover Crack and Star Fucking Hipsters? Are you working on anything coming up with those bands besides the book? Well, so, um, I mean, personally, I have a couple of chapters of a book that I'm writing that doesn't necessarily focus on any of my bands. It's just kind of an autobiography of some sort that I may never finish or work on again, but I have a couple of pretty intense chapters. Um, Let the Crack, I have a lot of songs. I have probably like 20 songs that, and there's even songs left over from Concerts of the State that were never released that are done. Um, there's one that, uh, so, so I guess that's the third thing we're gonna try and release and, and it's complicated. There's so many things that I feel like I don't want to burn everybody out and that they don't want any of them because I just list a bunch of kind of like, yeah, this, this, and this. Leftover Crack, Choking Victim, got a seven inch and a thing, another thing. I don't know. I don't know why plugging things just seems kind of unappealing to me unless I have it like in my hand. Yeah. Also plugging future projects is is playing with fire, uh, you know, the type of fire that might never show up. You know, <laughs> I feel you on that. I mean, sometimes I don't, I don't like to announce things either until they're really, really concrete and set in stone. Yeah. yeah. So I feel but you. But that being said, I also, I work, I work well under and, uh, and deadlines, but I just don't have any really right now. There's kind of deadlines, but I don't know. This quarantine's nice in a way just to be able to relax and not feel like I'm in a race for the world, you know? Yeah, I, I went through through that a little bit too. Like, I mean, there was a part of me when this quarantine started and I was still really backed up on, on editing features that I shot up until last year. And then festival season was about to start again and I was feeling the pressures from that. Yeah. And, but then it was like, cool. 
now all the shows have been canceled, which is fucking horrible. But then it's like, well, it's the time to get caught up. So I think there's like, you know, it's like this with this quarantine. I mean, it's really unnatural to be isolated for this long. I but think one of the, well, well, the, actually, I, I might disagree with you on that. I feel like it's, it's, it might be natural to be, I mean, if you think about humans in history, like there didn't used to be that many people, right? So I think that, that we were probably had a lot more space and didn't interact with that many, as many people, you know, traditionally over millions of years or whatever evolution. But the thing that I worry about is our show's going to ever happen again, you know? They will. It'll just be, they a, might, be a while. And they might, but they might not be anything like they were, you know? It's hard to say. I think, I think when it's going to come out, like when, because obviously, you know, they have to do this in phases. I think a lot of bands, um, that are able to play acoustically are going to be the first ones that get to play shows again because acoustic shows in a seated venue have that where they can follow the rules of spreading people out and yeah. less capacity so i think it's it's going to be the bands that can play acoustically are going to get dibs on sh on shows so just days and days all days and days shows <laughs> no there's other bands out there you might Start learning to play acoustically. Two other bands that aren't Days and Days that play acoustic. Anti Flag. That's but that's only half the band. That's two people, and one of them is named number two. And then, name another one. The Bomb Pops. Do they play all three of? There's three of them, right? They play acoustic. There's, there's four of them. <laughs> Are they all going to be playing acoustic? I don't know. No. No, you're right. No, you're right. Here's You'll be like... thing, though. I play acoustic, and um, you know, I, I don't think it sounds terrible, but I also don't think it sounds good. <laughs> you know, like I, I think Days and Days sounds amazing. They somehow <laughs> sound like a band, and you know, there's no drumming, there's no drummer, and there's no like actual bass being played, but they sound, they still like fill out their sound. But I don't know too many bands that can do that. Yeah, I think it's it's going to be the next the next thing that a lot of musicians maybe have to face. That if do you want to get out there and play shows again, you got to learn to do acoustic. Guns and Roses. Okay. Patience. Yeah. Guns and Roses and Days and Days should tour together. Yes. <laughs> I think Guns and Roses will have to open up though. <laughs> Absolutely, because days and days is climbing the charts. They're gonna, they're going, they're going. Yeah. Um, so you've actually been doing a bunch of paintings in quarantine. Did that start with the quarantine, or were you doing that before? I started doing that when I was self quarantining a year and a half ago. Um, you know, um, I wouldn't call it self quarantining much more. It was much more like nobody, there was nobody around and nobody wanted to hang out with me. So I was by myself painting, but I also make music by myself, but I, I feel like I'm, I, I need a break or I'm taking a break or I don't know. I'm much, it's much more fun for me to paint, even though half the paintings or more are terrible. No, I think they're beautiful, but there is something therapeutic about painting. I went to Cambodia last October on like a wellness retreat for the same kind of thing. And we did a painting class and my painting was ugly as fuck when it started. And then I just, it morphed into something beautiful. What, what was it a painting of, if you don't mind me asking? I, well, it's, I started with it trying to be like a painting of something. I don't remember what. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not this kind of painter that I can actually make an object. So I'm just going to let it go where it goes, and that's where it morphed into something that didn't look like diarrhea on a canvas. Make, make it something that's at least intriguing to, to stare at, even if it's not an actual thing. Yeah. 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 I, I, I mean, like your that. paintings are cool. There's like, they look like monsters and shit. Well, some of them are monsters, and, and then the thing is, you don't see the terrible ones. Every other one's really awful, and I don't post them because they're really bad. <laughs> Well, then, so, and then, but then once in a blue moon, I'll paint something that, that just comes out of nowhere that is a total flute that is amazing to me. And I'm like, I can't believe I painted this thing. And 
it takes every ounce of of uh of patience or i don't know every ounce of self-control to not keep messing with it and ruining it because i do that too yeah I do that. a lot of people do that with with music too but uh it's easier for me to give up on music and be like, this is fine, it's done. <laughs> you know, especially if you have the con constraints of a band. Yeah. You know, you put a bunch of cellos in it, you know, so. <laughs> well, so for everyone out there, um, if you want to see Stizza's paintings, you can look at them on his Instagram, at Crack Daddy Kane. They are for sale. Um, so I want to talk about, over the years, your your aesthetic of your wardrobe has changed. Like, even today, you're so, you're so dressy. You're so dressy. Well, yeah, I, it, it hasn't changed a lot. It was, you know, I, I, I it, it went from when I was a preteen or teenager, you know, still dressing in some of the clothes my mom bought me, you know? Yeah. But I did go into this phase when I was about seven. Miami Vice came out, and I was really into Miami Vice. And and so that, that, uh, that birthday that year, I got went to, to Macy's and got some like Miami Vice looking shirts and and clothes and uh, I always enjoyed doing that and I was really into pop music back then like 80s pop music and then basically you know if anybody's seen photos of me in the past 20 years I've, I became a scumbag you know just like well not scumbag but just a crusty and and I was fine with that but I think at some point I, well, first I started going to, to, I was learning law stuff because, uh, because I was living in a squat in Oakland and we got a five day eviction notice and we wanted to stay there at least for a couple of weeks. And we have a friend that has, he passed the bar exam and he, um, he lives in a squat in Oakland and he, um, he actually has lived in a few and he's, he knows how to like work the Alameda court system to kind of at the very least stay in these buildings for at least a year or years and he's actually won possession of at least one of them and so he gave me pointers and you know I've been living in sea squat since the early 90s and nobody here went to you know n you know nobody here really knows the process of how we got this building exactly and you know, we, we do own this building now, but it was really something that I felt, um, I felt like, I, you know, I, I felt deserved to be learned to, to, uh, like squat law somewhere. And, um, and it proved to be really beneficial. We ended up staying in that building for a year and I, I almost got to sue it, sue Fannie Mae for the building. And I feel like I would have won, honestly. But, um, you know, we didn't do everything in time and order. We're not lawyers. So, but, uh, you know, it was a pretty incredible experience. But ever since then, I kind of just kept, I was going to thrift stores and finding shirts and ties that I liked. And, and I guess I started kind of dressing like Miami Vice again, a little bit, you know. I'm not into I'm into it. I like, I like the pink suspenders. They're cute. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they would have worn that in Miami Vice, but, you know. I would have had they given me a part, you know. So, but what, but, you know, what never made you leave Sea Squat all these years? Like, I mean, a lot of people have come and gone. And what was it for you that made you want to stay? Well, the main thing about staying here is, is that I grew up in, in, in New York City, not far from this building. I grew up near Bellevue Hospital. And um, I just... It, at times, the city's made me really miserable, but there's something about having this is my hometown, and and it's not a place that is cheap to live. It's not easy to find a place, a rent stabilized place, or anything. But we ended up, um, you know, it was, it was kind of like a coup. We had a there was eleven buildings left in the in the Lower East Side in this neighborhood, and um, Rudolf Giuliani in the 90s was evicting all these squats around here and, and in other neighborhoods. And he was mainly evicting families. Like, we never really had a lot of families living in this building. Not until, until more recently, but, uh, like, on 13th Street, just a few blocks from here, they evicted 
four or five squats in one day, and they had, like, a tank that was, like, tearing down the walls, and, like, people were still in the building, some of the buildings. It was, like, they got really bad publicity. And somewhere through that, um, I guess this is what people theorize, that uh, that Giuliani was sick of getting bad press, so he just made a deal for the last 11 and sold them all for a dollar to, like, some non-profit place that that we, you know, we're kind of stuck to still, but uh, we had to, you know, we, we, we still have to keep it up to code and, and we do pay money to, um, we have like bank loans that, that have to be paid back to, to have bought it up to code and stuff. But, but uh, there's, you know, I can't think of some other place that I would settle down in, you know, it's, it's, it's got its memories, even though the city changes every five minutes, you know? Yeah, that's what a lot of New Yorkers say, that the city is just so different now. It keeps changing, but, like, that's your home. And, and like you said, too, it's, it's fucking expensive to live there. I know. I, I, I mean, even my mom moved away. She moved to New Mexico, and it was, like, interesting choice. She should have moved in here. I, I'm hardly ever here. Oh no, did we mute again? You muted again! <laughs> um, so we're almost done. I'm gonna disconnect you and reconnect and we'll Yeah. Alright, here we go. I hope everyone is enjoying this despite all of our fucking connection issues. Um the connection issues are awful. But um, thank you for everyone for being here. I want to close with like a couple more songs because I've seen a bunch of you guys asking for more music. Um, you did play some songs earlier. So we'll do that. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Sorry guys, we're connecting. We're trying to connect one more time. <laughs> this is like literally like the fifth time today we've done this. Um, the woes of live streams. <laughs> Should have, bitch, more time on my Wi-Fi than my hair. Fuck you. How do you spend more time on your Wi-Fi? I'm paying for the fastest one I can pay for. Like, it's out of my control. <laughs> so, whatever. Our fake tits, punk rock, they're not fake, assholes. Thanks. Thank you for that. Are we clearing rumors on my end now? Is that what we're doing while we wait for Stizza to get back on here? <laughs> Are we, um, is this, is this clear rumors about Aaron now? God, haters, the haters of the internet. Okay. How do I deal with some of these comments? Like I just did, I guess, just dispel the rumors, you know? <laughs> hey, hey, you're back. Am, am, I, am I back? Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I have no idea what's going on, but but hopefully we can make it through the end of this without it stopping again. Yes, um, so I have last question before we jump into some songs. I wanted to close with a sweet one. Um, you're engaged to Whitney from Days and Days. What is your dream wedding for you guys? What did she say? I didn't ask her that. This question just for you. Uh, <laughs> all right. My dream wedding by, by Sizzle Crack. I think it would start out. I like the beach a lot. I like sunsets in the beach. So it, a sunsetty day. We'd schedule it just so it was sunset the whole time. And, and then go swimming. But we'd wait 45 minutes after we ate, so nobody drowned. Okay. And then there'd be some dolphins. My best man would be a dolphin. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah. And that dolphin, it's a flying dolphin, because it's a dream wedding, you know? Fly, <laughs> the dolphin's flying. 
and um, and we don't have to fill out any legal paperwork. The dolphin just like you know bestows the you know, that we are now married. It's all done. <laughs> I know it's spinny wheel. Oh. Oh, I know we have a spinning wheel, but I did hear what you said. I hope everyone else heard. I think that's really cute. Um, I hope when you guys do have your wedding day, you can manage to get some pieces of that. Uh, 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 I'm like, please work so we can close with some music for everybody because that would be awesome. Am I back? Can you hear me? I, we keep freezing. Both one of you. Yeah, one I can of, hear you. Or both of us. <laughs> I see you moving. I can hear you. I hear you laughing. A little bit. What's that? I can hear you. I can see you. Here, I'm gonna stop moving the phone. Yeah, stop moving the phone. Stop. Stop doing that. <laughs> you sound like that. 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 that, 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 that. That's what you sound like to me. I don't know if that's something weird. Babe, you gotta stop. Uh, water everywhere. Oh, there's water. Yeah, you can smell water. Why? I'm trying to get this to stay. Okay, hold hold on a second. I'm just trying to get the thing to stay in the place. Um, I'm gonna get my drill. No. And I'm drilling it on the thing. No, no, because it's gonna take too long. Do you see that? Do you, do you, do you, I'll get it. Thank you. Here, one second, okay? Okay. Hopefully, this will make it all better. Oh, I need the thing. Uh, oh, um, can you hand me that that the that green thing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad at least a lot of you guys. Um, I see in the comments a lot of you guys are enjoying all of our technical difficulties today. <laughs> I hope you guys are all entertained at home. I'm and and it seems like we're in a good spot to finish the show if I can just get this open. And I can get this thing. So where's the patchwork? Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> almost, almost. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. It might be loud for a second, but that's okay. Does anybody I, out there watching have requests of what you'd like to hear? Drop them in the comments. Someone call Geek Squad. Yeah. If, maybe we could get like five or six together and I'll try and play them all real fast, you know? <laughs> that screws too long anyways. I didn't like it. It fell on the floor. Yeah, people drop in the comments what you want to hear while he, I don't know, drills things. Someone said 500 channels, suicide, suicide again. Yeah. Born I bet some stuff like answers in. The Born to Die counts. Suicide. Counts. Five, we've got like two requests for 500 channels, three requests for suicide, two requests for Born to wow. Die. Functionality. Okay. You're getting a lot of requests. It's going to be hard to choose. <laughs> no, but I'm going to try and play them all. Okay. You know? <laughs> this is a hard angle. Oh, no, I'm putting you there for a second. I'll get one this. dead cop. You know he already Just played one dead cop earlier. Yeah, where have you been? <laughs> Person that next to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's jam this in here. I think I got it. Just stay. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Slidey. Um. So. I think I got it. All right. I get the guitar. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. All right. I'm take my suspenders. Oh. Uh, the song go fuck your head. Fuck your head. All right. Here we go. Back in. Suited, suited and booted. Suited and booted to play. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually not wearing boots. I'm wearing socks. I don't have any shoes on either. <laughs> what? Don't don't shatter the the. Sh 
What is it? Shatter the illusion. Don't shatter the illusion. <laughs> People think you're wearing shoes. <laughs> All right, now I got a guitar pick in this thing, right? Mm -hmm. I did have one before. Yeah. I got a lot of them, let me tell you. And then everyone out there watching, I just want to remind you that um, if you want to send tips to Stizza, um, I have his Venmo and his PayPal pinned in the comments right there. Um, you can send him tips. You can buy his art. Obviously, musicians all in this time, tours have been postponed. So support how you can if you are enjoying this. <laughs> What's not to enjoy, right? <laughs> it's, uh, it's got action, adventure, power tools. Wet socks. I'm walking in water now. Just like Jesus. So, uh, you want me to sing like a, G a Jesus Christian-y song or what? No. No. Yeah, I got one. Okay. Wait, sweet. Let me write down these these requests real quick. Let me make a little list. <laughs> Let me make the most out of it. There's so many. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're pretty much like requesting all your songs. But a lot of the ones I saw repeatedly were Suicide, um, 500 Channels, Born to Die. Okay. Those were... It sounds a lot like um, just choking become songs, but Suicide. <laughs> Two Cups of Tea. Die. I've seen that one a few times. Okay. Let me do. Yeah. Nice. 3,000 Miles. I've seen that one a few times. You Can't Go Home. 500. I'm a slow writer, by the way. <laughs> uh, oh, I have a question. So when this thing. Does this thing end at a certain time, or does it not really matter? You know what? It was only supposed to be an hour, and again, Instagram just keeps changing shit, because the other day, it let me just keep going. I'm like, do I get special privileges because I do so many of these fucking live streams now? Oh, so it's supposed to cut off after an hour? Yeah, but m mine hasn't been. Like, it just lets me keep going. Like, I, I did one the other day with Dave from The Casualties, and it went for, like, 63 minutes because I screen recorded it. It's about to go up on my YouTube channel. And um, it was like 63 minutes. So Instagram never cut it off. I don't know what's was happening. He was he can't go home on that list, did you say? Um, what are we can't go home? No. The unreleased stuff, infested. You're frozen, by the way. Uh oh, am I? Buffering, buffering, buffering. <laughs> Every rose has I its thorn. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I know. You are disinfested. You can't go home. I keep seeing that one. Oh, you did. You, you did have. You can't go home. Okay. All right. This is how we do it. There's no like Rexon effects or anything, or. Okay. Wait, what? Yeah. Nothing. I'm just saying, like, just stupid shit. That's not funny. <laughs> um, here's, I have, I have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight songs. I was trying to do them in, like, like three minutes or something. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. I'm getting right? a shot. Start to play the songs. I'm getting a shot. You're getting a shot? You know what? My, my phone leaning on my scotch. <laughs> Have a shot, but I do see some vodka. Hold up, I'm gonna have a shot. Everybody, have a shot and tip your bartender. <laughs> tip your bartender. Oh, god. Woo, yeah. woo Tito's. What's that? I said, Woo, Tito's. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Boom. Oh. All right, that made me feel good. All right. Uh, I'm in tune. Mostly in tune.
Stizza, you're muted again. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, guys, I tried everything to get his attention and I did what you said. I removed him. It was so good. It was so good even though we couldn't hear sound. Let's try again. God. This day today with this live stream. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are entertained by it, at least. Hello? Hey, did it work at all? Did I get? We got like 
three songs in and then it muted and everybody was like commenting they're like they're like tell him to stop he's jamming but we can't hear anything and like all the people watching were so sad they're like he's going for it man should I, should I keep going should i try, try back to what's the last song you heard what's the last song you guys heard drop it in the comments drop it in the comments <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a delay on this of 30 minutes or 30 <laughs> seconds, at, rather. <laughs> 30 minutes. 30 minutes, yeah. Oh my god. It's playing so long. Everybody that's watching has been saying they, they're entertained, so that's good. <laughs> I could just dance too, you know? <laughs> okay, um, people keep saying, I heard you, the last I heard was. Born to Dad. Yeah, I heard that one, and then that's where you kind of cut off. Yeah. Okay. Two cups of tea. One for you and one for me. Cover me let's leak into you. Just 
talk about tough stuff that I uh, I should talk about all the time because because uh, I don't know I have anxiety and stuff like that and I usually don't want to talk about things but um I really should just uh, no you know, I talk I, about it's I think it gets really hard to talk about things that 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 are real like if something actually happened and I, and I fucked up and did something wrong which I'm sure has happened I've done bad things that would be tough to talk about. It's not hard to talk about something that isn't necessarily true, you know? Yeah, but I appreciate you sharing that finally, and and hopefully that'll that'll put a lot of what people are saying to rest because you know, forget about it. Like your the bands that you have and your music is so legendary and it has inspired so many people and so many other musicians out there. So um, 
I didn't, I didn't like what people were saying because you, you are legendary. You're valuable and important to the scene and have inspired so many people. So thank you so much for being here. That's nice of you to say. Thank you for that. Um, I just think, uh, you know, people, people are going to need an outlet to talk shit about stuff and things and people. And, like, why not me? I'm, a, I'm an easy target, you know? I don't mind it so much, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, it doesn't mess up my day, you know? Um, you know, I, people are people. A lot of these people that talk shit on the internet, actually you meet them in person. They're really nice, are friendly, and they like, they like my band maybe, and they just uh, have a weird way of showing it, you know? Yeah. In fact, every well, single person that ever talks go. about me on the internet is loved by my band. Can I say that? Every single person yeah. on the internet that talks shit about me is in love with all, all my bands. And I, I don't know, how, I don't, they're, you know, they should try, try 311. That's a band that you, you might like. Um, try uh, the Weather Men, you know, It's Raining Men, is that? Yeah. Um, the Four are a great uh, disco band. Disco band. ABBA? No, I don't, I don't, you got me I don't there. listen to disco, to be honest. Uh -oh. No, zero disco, you're, you're one, you like were burning records in the field at the baseball game. All right. No, you know, I. It's their own. You know what though, Aaron, you do like disco. You do like disco, you just don't know it, that it's disguised as ska or it's disguised as like, as Slipknot, you know? But you love all those bands. For sure. Well, I'm gonna let you guys go. Um, enjoy the rest of your night. Again, thank you for doing this. Congratulations on Days and Days charting. That's amazing. It's a big deal. Yes. I, congratulations, Days and Days. Thank you. And thank you for letting me sneak onto your record. Right, yes, guys. I was just going to say something. What are you looking for? I was looking. I took a, it was like a, a Oh, no, no. You got one? No, I moved them. Oh, we had these, you know, the best laid plans of mice and mans are, you know, that's, that's a quote from a book or something. Oh, I found them. She found them. You got one from me, too? And, and c congratulations to you for having a, a, a good show and, and like, don't let the haters get you down either, you know? We need to stick together and battle the, you know, the negative motherfuckers. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, guys, have a good night. Woo! Shooting. Hey, shooting. Good night. Bye. <laughs>